Hi and welcome to another video about my um, curly brace and semicolon language hopper. It's like a junior version of C Sharp or Java. It has a managed heap and garbage collection. Um, without further ado, let me show what I've been up to. Um, up to now, I've only shown videos of running it on the 6502 platform, um, but I've got it running on microcontrollers as well. So let me demonstrate. So if I, this standard, uh, blink program that one does on a microcontroller um, and I've got it running on uh, on a Raspberry Pi Pico um, so if I build this project and then go to go to my debugger and just hit F5 um, and we have a, a blinky light happening right uh, what's different to normal development on these platforms is that I have a full symbolic debugger. So if I if I break, I'm now in the debugger at this line, and if I hit F10, they like Visual Studio keys, I can uh, step through these instructions. So light goes on, light goes off, and it delays for a little while. Um, a lot of the Hopper runtime library is written in Hopper, so if I step into this LED equals true, it takes me into where that's defined, and you can see more the guts of how it's implemented. So a lot of Hopper is written in Hopper. In fact, um, this runtime was written in Hopper and then cross-compiled. So the way I, when I did the 6502, I wrote the runtime on the 65. 502 in 6502 assembler but I figured I'd want to have an easier way of making it more portable in future so I wrote the runtime in hopper um, and tested it on Windows so running the runtime on top of my existing Windows run runtime for hopper about 7,000 lines of hopper to make a runtime and then that I wrote a new code generator um, that generates C code from the hopper uh, uh, bytecodes makes about 30,000 lines of C which gives you a runtime on on hopper anyway um, I'm going to do a longer video explaining how I how I got this far uh, in the meantime I'll just uh, do another carry on with this demonstration run a few more examples um, on this device so uh, let's get out of there we've got some more examples here so Let's see what we got. And I can just run from my command line interface as well. So I can run my hopper monitor. Now I'm on my command line interface via the serial port. And I can load one of my classic uh, demonstration examples. So the Mandelbrot example was uh, Gordon Henderson's tiny basic example that I was working with on the 6502 so it's just something that I know how fast it is on the other platform running on hopper and it runs considerably faster on the um, hopper VM running on uh, Raspberry Pi Pico but this is not the most efficient way to write a runtime uh, ultimately a faster runtime for the Raspberry Pi Pico would be um, something that's written in uh, C directly rather than cross compiled from Hopper. Uh, I've got a sample, a Fibonacci sequence sample that I have uh, data on for how fast it should run on a Pico. Uh, that's uint, not unit. There we go. So this should run on a Raspberry Pi Pico if it's running in um, MicroPython. Um, it should take about two seconds. Um, seems really, really slow right now. Something wrong. Hmm. 14 seconds. I had it running at about 10 seconds. So it was running about five times slower than MicroPython. Um, but I, as I said, this is definitely the most, least efficient way that I could have got the runtime up, on, up and running on the Pi Pico because I wrote it in Hopper and then cross-compiled it. But it does make it super portable and make it easy for me to support other platforms quickly and get up and running. And in the long run, if there's interest, um, can rewrite the key, key parts of the runtime. I don't even need to rewrite the whole thing, just the key parts of it need to can be rewritten in 
um, arm assembler or in C. Anyway, I've got another video that I'll tack on to the end of this, which is more um, the details of how I did this. Thank you for watching.